Americans are now obese. We have a huge number of people who are overweight. And so many people are saying, what's the best way to lose weight? Well, that's a question that many Americans are struggling to get the answer. Our next guest says he found a surefire path to a wellness revolution. Vitamins, health food, exercise, fitness clubs. Despite this growing trend, only a small percentage of Americans really understand what it takes to stay healthy. In 1996, Paul Pilser, a world-renowned economist, became interested in the field of health and made some significant discoveries of his own. He then wrote the book, The Wellness Revolution. 61% of our population is overweight. And worse than that, 27% is clinically obese. That's overweight at a point where you don't know where to turn. Through his scientific research, Paul found out what you need to know to move from sickness and obesity to vibrant well-being. Paul Zane Pilser is joining us to share some of his secrets of staying fit. It's in his new book called The Wellness Revolution. And there he is looking like Yul Brenner on the cover, <laughs> ready to start in the king and I. Paul, it's good to have you with us. It's great to be here. You are trained as an economist, an economic advisor on a couple of presidential administrations. What got you into wellness, fitness? Well, the same reason I became an economist. Growing up as a child of immigrants in the 1950s in Brooklyn, mm -hmm. everyone wanted to know about economic issues. Yeah. Although my education geared me towards science, I ended up going to Wharton and becoming a professor of economics because my family, my father, his uncles, that's what they wanted information about. They wanted to know how to make a living. 25 years later, as a very successful economist, I realized I'm now in the wrong field. What people mostly need in the United States, the number one problem today is health, yeah. as evidenced by the fact that 61% is overweight and 27% of our population, that's 77 million Americans, are clinically obese. That's shocking, isn't it? It's, it's shocking. even more shocking to look at the trends. Mm -hmm. 20 years ago, the numbers were less than half that. So in the last two decades, while we're all talking about health, and it's all you see when you turn on the television yeah. or watch an ad, the population of obese and overweight people has more than doubled. That set me on a research quest to say, why is this happening? What did you discover? What I discovered was it was really an economic problem, yeah. not a scientific or biology problem. All right. In effect, we have a $1 trillion food industry in the United States. We pay farmers $40 million to produce food, but $940 billion, but $960 billion is paid to package food companies and fast food companies. The food companies in America today are primarily owned by the tobacco companies, and they make addictive processed foods. They study every one of their existing customers and say, how can I get them to consume more? The fast food restaurants know that if you're overweight, mm -hmm. you consume 50% more at the cash register and only take up roughly the same amount of space. Wait a minute. If you're overweight, you, 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 you consume 50% more, you buy... buy, buy Absolutely. You see it by portions of what people eat. Yeah. So they study American consumers like rats in a laboratory. You have a favorite Christian singer, and all of a sudden you feel good about a certain addictive fast food. Yeah. Guess who sang the commercial that's in the back of your mind when you go to buy it at the checkout counter? They study Americans like rats to increase consumption of their food products, mm -hmm. and in doing so, have more than doubled obesity and overweight in the United States. This is, this is uh, unbelievable because we have a, a health problem that's crowding one and a half trillion dollars. It's, 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 it's run away, and, and obesity is one of the major causative factors, heart disease, high blood pressure, so on. Everything. And really, most of our medical problems mm -hmm. today that are non-pediatric or non-geriatric stem from being overweight and obese. So as I studied it, I realized that the answer was an economic problem had yeah. caused being overweight and obese. As I studied it, I saw America ready for a revolution, a wellness revolution, mm -hmm. and that there was a new industry emerging called a wellness industry. We spend $1.5 on medicine, mm -hmm. which is really the sickness industry. That's right. It's not really health. It's about when you get sick, they treat the symptoms of your disease. Mm -hmm. We currently spend, and that would, that's what amazed me the most, $200 billion on wellness, fitness clubs, healthy foods, mm -hmm. vitamins and supplements. Most of that didn't exist. When I ran the numbers, I could see that the 200 billion wellness industry, which is primarily today upper class baby boomers who are consuming them, first mm -hmm. thing someone does when they make money is try to get healthy. Oh, yeah. And yeah. they get out of the diet and kind of medical care most of us get, 
and they start getting healthier. And that this 200 billion I projected would grow to a one trillion dollar wellness industry by 2010. Well, look, are we finding ourselves on the one hand we're gorging on trans fatty acids and greasy hamburgers and greasy fries and carcinogenic products. On the other hand, we're out puffing away on treadmills <laughs> and, and, and lifting weights. Uh, I mean, are, are the, the same people doing these things, or are this a totally different class of people? It, it is really different people. Uh -huh. And so many people who do get on the treadmills are not getting the right information. The problem is that the food industry controls, in effect, our television. Look at most commercials today mm -hmm. for television shows or food companies. Sure. And they try to get their consumers to eat more and more of their existing foods. As the food industry focuses on those who are overweight, they make them more and more overweight. And then when someone says, I want to lose weight, I want to get healthy, they get misinformation out there because they've got this industry that controls our media that is constantly saying, how do I get you to eat more food? What should people do to, to lose weight? What, what, what are the tips? That, well, know? I didn't write a book to come up with tips, but I came up with quite a few in doing my research. All right. The main one is really timing. Mm -hmm. From the time you're hungry, if you start eating food, your stomach doesn't tell your brain that you've now sated and had enough food mm -hmm. until 15 minutes have passed. So mm -hmm. you can see why fast food restaurants are so deadly, because you go in there hungry, and you keep eating and eating and eating in less than 15 minutes, but it isn't until 15 minutes that your body knows you've had enough. When we used to eat with grandma and they took time between each course, yeah. you naturally controlled the amount you eat because it took 15 minutes between courses, and that told your body to stop eating. Oh. What supplements? People are spending a lot of money on vitamin supplements. Is there anything that people should be looking for? Uh, the main thing they should be looking for is to see that their supplements are real. One third of the supplements that you purchase today in the store uh -huh. are not in the bottle what it says on the label. Because supplements are an unregulated industry in this country. There are several companies that just buy supplements and rate them just for what's in the bottle. And most of the times what you're getting, or about half the times, you're not getting what's on the bottle. So you've got to find a brand that has in the bottle what's on the label. The wellness re revolution, uh, how to make a fortune in the next trillion dollar industry. Where do people make money in this thing? Well, that's what I started to discover. I could see that there were 15 million Americans of 300 million who were getting healthier as they aged. You're a great example about that, especially <laughs> when we see you on television. Yeah. As you get older, you're stronger, mm -hmm. you're better fit. What's going on? It's people who have time to focus on it are seeking out the right products and services to make them healthy. Right. And that's when I could see an emerging $1 trillion wellness industry one of the most surprising parts of my research was to find that it already reached two hundred billion dollars but if you think of what you now spend on supplements on yeah. fitness on weight training and time and money that you never dreamed you even needed twenty years ago that's exactly right you are a very typical consumer of this upper crust that's becoming and will become the entire nation i believe as this new wellness industry emerges well, boy i hope you're right but so uh, ladies and gentlemen uh how you could A, be well, and B, make some money at the same time. <laughs> this book, The Wellness Revolution, where you can get it? It's by Wiley Press. Is it available in bookstores? It should be in every bookstore every around the country. Store. Paul Zane tells her, thank you so much for being with us. Thank you very much. It's a real honor. Terry, what's